That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. Today's Daily Dose of Stupid. You guessed it. It's about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. I really am going to have to change the name of this segment to the Daily Dose of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez because she seems to be, whenever something stupid happens in the country, she seems to be right at the middle of it. So here's a clip of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez with this scathing rebuke of Congress completely rejecting her proposal for the Green New Deal. Let's take a look. Talk about uh, the concern of the environment as an elitist concern. One year ago, I was waitressing in a taco shop in downtown Manhattan. I just got health insurance for the first time a month ago. Again, what is that? This is not an elitist issue. This is a quality of life issue. You want to tell people that their concern and their desire for clean air and clean water is elitist? Tell that to the kids in the South Bronx, which are suffering from the highest rates of childhood asthma in the country. Tell that to the families in Flint, whose kids have their blood is ascending in, in lead levels. Their brains are damaged for the rest of their lives. Call them elitist. You're telling them that those kids are trying to get on a plane to Davos? People are dying. They are dying. And the response across the other side of the aisle is to introduce an amendment five minutes before a hearing and a markup. This is serious. This should not be a partisan issue. This is about our constituents and all of our lives. Iowa, Nebraska, broad swaths, swaths of the Midwest are drowning right now underwater. Farms, towns that will never be recovered and never come back. And we're here and and people are more concerned about helping oil companies than helping their own families. I don't think so. I don't think so. This is about our lives. This is about American lives. And it should not be partisan. Science should not be partisan. We are facing a national crisis. (laughs) So in typical... Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez fashion. All right. So first I, I want to talk about the media response to this because I, I saw so many different headlines and articles about this and just about all of them characterized her speech there in the same way. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez gives a scathing rebuke of Congress in the wake of her Green New Deal not passing. And uh, the one that I saw, probably the word that was used more in any of these headlines than, than all the others was passionate, which you have to say, that's accurate. It was pretty passionate. You just saw it. But the thing is, passion does not equal being correct. That's the thing that a lot of people need to get over. That just because someone is angry about something or just because someone speaks in a way that it's very emotional does not mean that they're correct on the issue. For example, I could correct, uh, I could speak very passionately about the terrible things that are happening right now in Narnia, but it doesn't mean that they're actually happening. I mean, I could craft a speech because of my knowledge of, of the Chronicles of Narnia. I could craft a speech that I would be talking very passionately about how we need to go to Narnia and help them, but it wouldn't make a difference because Just me being passionate about it doesn't make Narnia a real place. And that's the thing that people don't really understand is that just because a rebuke or a speech of any kind is passionate and has fervor does not mean it is rooted in truth. That's something that we really need to remember. And the thing is, she really does come off as the angry teenage girl that is upset and overdramatic about everything. For example, if you've ever dealt with a teenage girl, they act like every problem is the end of the earth. And in her case, she actually does act like every problem is the end of the earth because she still thinks the earth is like going to end in 12 years or something. So Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez playing the part of a dramatic teenage girl that every problem is the end of the planet. Every single little thing that happens to her is the worst thing that has ever happened to anybody. And it just so greatly... Uh, coincides with the study that we just looked at that millennials are saying their lives are more stressful than it's ever been in the history of mankind. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez seems to kind of go along with that. She's kind of like the girl's like, if I don't get that dress, I'm just going to die. 
that's how she comes off. Just because you're passionate about something doesn't make you right. You can be angry. You can, you know, stomp your foot and fur your brow all you want. Still doesn't make you right. And it still doesn't mean that people are going to cave to you just because you happen to be passionate about something because she really is that way. She acts like a teenage girl that if she holds her breath or pitches a fit or shows her tail enough that she thinks people are going to come over to her side. Look, making compelling arguments is my trade. It's what I do for a living. It's what I'm doing right now. But here's the thing. When I come up across somebody that I disagree with, first of all, losing your temper is the worst thing you can do. And second of all, I understand that in order to get them to do what I want them to or to change their way of thinking and think the way that I think is correct, then I need to state my position and there needs to be an exchange of ideas. And I need to explain it in such a way that they can comprehend what I'm saying, take it in and make a decision for themselves. That's how a debate or a discussion or an argument about a particular issue is supposed to function. There's supposed to be a mutual understanding there, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you change people's minds, most of the time you don't. But the thing is, I understand that it is incumbent upon me to present my ideas and my beliefs in such a way that they can understand it and that it will be convincing and compelling enough that they will take what I'm saying seriously. This is a concept Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez does not understand. Because her whole life, all she's ever had to do is speak passionately and pitch a fit, and she usually gets her way. I mean, that's essentially what she did to get in office, is she was talking about how terrible things are and how terrible Trump is and just made a big stink about it, and voters gave her exactly what she wanted, which is to be elected. And so this is somebody that doesn't understand how to convince somebody that doesn't agree with her. That's the reason she never goes on any shows or has is a guest on any program of somebody that has views other than her. There are plenty of Democrat senators and Democrat House members that I vehemently disagree with. But yeah, they'll go on Fox News or they'll go on The Blaze or they'll talk to people like that. And I respect them for it. Don't agree with them but still respect him. AOC does none of this. She never goes anywhere where she knows that there's going to be anything less than a completely sympathetic audience, an audience that is going to completely agree with every word that she says. And that display really shows why. Because she does not know how to have a productive discussion with anyone that disagrees with her on anything. And that's the reason that she never goes anywhere if there are going to be people that disagree with her. That's really what this all boils down to. And what's really strange is most of this tirade actually has nothing to do with the Green New Deal. She starts talking about how she was working in a taco place and, I don't know, getting health insurance for the first time or whatever, which, by the way, is a complete lie because I guess up until the age of 26, she would have still been on her parents. And she's only 29 now, so maybe there was a lapse. But best case scenario, that would be a lapse of, what, three years? And yeah, it's ridiculous that she's able to stay on her parents' insurance until she's 26 because of ACA. But still, the point is that she only would have, according to her, not been on health insurance at that point. And considering she comes from a pretty wealthy family, I kind of doubt that if anything bad had happened to her that she would have been in any trouble. But nonetheless, won't linger on that too much. One thing that she talked about, too, is that she was complaining about people in the Bronx with asthma and people in Flint, Michigan having levels of lead in their blood. These are both real concerns. I don't know a whole lot about the Bronx, haven't really studied that issue. But here's the thing. Isn't she supposed to be from the Bronx? I mean, I know not originally. She grew up in a very nice, wealthy neighborhood. But I'm talking about, isn't she from that area? And if that was a problem, shouldn't she be doing something there at the local level to fix that? If their air pollution is so bad that it's giving kids asthma, that it's causing problems for them, shouldn't she have been running for a local office then? The idea that the Bronx are having problems and because of that we need to put down this massive sweeping regulation that affects people in Texas and Alabama and North Dakota and all these other places that aren't having these problems, that doesn't really make any sense. 
And did you notice something else about that? These areas that you mentioned, like the Bronx, like Flint, Michigan, those are deep, deep blue Democrat strongholds. The entire city council of Flint, Michigan, and the mayor, all Democrats. Bronx, pretty much impossible to get elected unless you're a Democrat. Let's be honest. The only reason that she's sitting in office right now is because the Bronx is deep, deep blue. And so because of that, because there's no way this person would have won in an even somewhat contentious race. And so because of that, she's saying that there's all these horrible environmental problems, and then she's waggling her finger, literally wagging her finger at the other side when the places that you just mentioned that are having these issues are Democrat-controlled areas. Seems to me before you waggle your finger, you need to consider maybe there's something the Democrats should be doing on this. And furthermore, let's also note that she's talking about the other side, but it was her side that refused to vote for it, including a bunch of the senators that are running for president now that said they would support it, and then when it came time, they voted president. Would not vote for the Green New Deal. Did not want to be on record as having voted in favor of this. Not even freaking Bernie Sanders, as crazy as he is, decided, nope, not going to vote for it. Man, it's just amazing to me. And uh, Mitch McConnell, when he did bring this up for a vote, and you got to hand it to Cocaine Mitch, he played them like a fiddle. And he played them like a fiddle by giving them exactly what they wanted. It's like, oh, you you want it, you think it's such an important thing? You think that there's all these people dying and it's so urgent and we have to do this right now or the world's going to end? Okay, let's vote on it. And they all voted present. Didn't vote no, but certainly didn't vote yes. Did not want to be put on record as voting in favor of that. Even the farthest left of the left-leaning senators were like, yeah, this thing's a nightmare. And I really love that there was so much commentary on this from people on the left. One of the people actually said Mitch McConnell sabotaged the Green New Deal. He sabotaged the Green New Deal by letting people vote on it? Think about that. All these people were saying, we have to have the Green New Deal. It's such a great proposal. It's so good. It's going to help the planet. Okay, let's vote on it. Uh, no, no. I've never seen anybody suggest that they were being sabotaged by giving them exactly what they wanted. I mean, in a sense, he did sabotage them, but that was just by calling their bluff. It's not that he did something tricky or underhanded. He just said, all right, y'all want to vote for it? Sure, we'll call it up for a vote. Because he knew there was no way that the Democrats were actually going to sign on to it when push came to shove. And that brings me to a larger point, both by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Democrats at large. They don't really believe the world is in imminent danger. They say it because they know it's popular with their base. They say it because it's fear-mongering and it drums up votes. But none of them really believe it. Because if they did, they would have voted for it. If they really believed that this was a huge monstrosity that was going to destroy the entire world in an extinction-level event, then they would take the stance of, okay, we need to do everything that we can. But they don't. By the way, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is not an exception to that rule. I think she believes it more than most people. But the thing is, she doesn't really believe it either. She was saying in an interview not too long ago that well, you know, nobody's perfect, and sometimes I don't recycle things because it's just too far to walk to the other container, and yeah, I still use transportation, and I still fly on airplanes and all this other stuff. And I'm thinking, if you really believe that what you were doing was truly immoral and destroying the planet, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do it. If you really believe that it was that big a deal, that it was that important, then you would make some sacrifices in your own personal life. And she doesn't. Remember how mad she got when somebody was taking a picture of her, I guess it was one of her advisors, her top advisors, 
that was sitting down to dinner with her eating a giant cheeseburger, even though Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez had just said the other day, we need to stop eating beef because it's killing the planet. Yeah, they don't believe it. It is a ploy to get votes and nothing more. And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is a great example of that. Although I will say this, she kept saying, well, the other side of the aisle and this shouldn't be a partisan issue. I guess technically now it's not because every single senator refused to vote for it, Republicans and Democrats. So I guess technically it is a nonpartisan issue now. <laughs> now, I know you're here because you're interested in information on what's going on in the state of Alabama and around the world, and you've come to the right place for that. But it's YouTube, so you could also just be here because you're bored. If you want me to keep making videos to keep you occupied, you need to go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back to playing Minesweeper.